Hello and welcome to Armstrong Fluid Technology Testing Facilities. My name is Andrew. We're going to be reviewing a couple screens here on a 6800 booster system. This is the control panel with a special option of a 4X panel, stainless steel. Let's take a look inside the panel. Inside the control panel you're going to find a fuse disconnect, you're going to find a distribution box, and you're going to find the fuses that control the VFDs. Also the low voltage fusing, the power supply, the PLC, and the terminal block. The PLC is now integrated from our past design with all the options now included inside of it with no extra cards involved. And we'll follow through with the HMI display. This is a design envelope system with a 24,040 design envelope. We have two 7.5 horsepower motors with a flow of 75 gallons per pump for a total of 150 gallons per minute. This is an optional NEMA 4X panel and an optional touchscreen. What we're going to do is we're going to set up the touchscreen today and we're going to go through that setup right now. So what we're going to do is there's your screen. We're going to enter our, our password or login. And that's going to give us our different options. Our first option is going to be the booster setup screen. And there it is. Okay, so what we have on our booster option screen is we have amount of pumps that we can put in. We have a standby pump we can put in, and the amount of pumps we can go from two to five pumps. Uh, standby pump, we can have anything over two pumps, we can make a standby pump, so we can have two pumps and a standby. The next screen is going to be a level switch. If you have a tank or a drawdown system, we have a level switch. We have two optional level switches we can install in the system. The next one down is going to be the drive type. We use an FC-102, which is an integrated with the motors. The next type is going to be the drive frequency. We're running off of 60 cycles. It could be 50 cycles if it's European. We're going to go into a lead switch time, which is the pumps. The pumps will run for a period of 24 hours, and then the next pump will take the lead. And this will change an alternate back and forth and relieve the load on one pump always running. Uh, rated kilowatt power is our next one, and that's the kilowatts of the motor. We need that to make the pumps run. Okay, on this screen, we're looking at our sensor setup screen which is a suction, discharge, and remote sensor. We can set those from 0 to 300 PSI or 0 to 400 PSI. We also have a remote sensor that can be set up anywhere in your system. The local suction gauge is set back 85%, which is an ASHRAE 90.1 2010 recommendation. Okay, and it is law. Our next screen we're going to go through is our pressure setup screen. And our pressure setup screen we set the pressure that the customer needs in his building. We also set up in here and we have an alternate discharge pressure screen. So if you have a setup in your building, a lot of people were using water first thing in the morning, in the afternoon or at night, or on the weekends we have low water consumption, we can set up those alternate pressures in our screen. Okay, we're going to go back to that screen and then we're going to advance to our next screen. Our next screen is going to be our suction our high suction and low suction pressures, which are pretty much set up at the factory but can be set in your building. A high and low discharge pressures, so if you need them to work a little bit more pressure, a little less pressure. We also have an emergency power mode. So if you have an alternator or if you have a generator in your building that's running and you don't want to run full power on the system but you need water, we can take care of that. We can run one pump or two pump and we can set the alternate pressure for this unit that comes out. Our next screen is going to be a stage on and stage off speeds. Okay, so once the pump runs, and maybe that's the maximum the pump can run, we want to stage the next one on, we'll stage it on at a percentage or an amount of power. And if you come down, we have a stage on delay or a stage off delay. So if you want the pump to run just a little bit longer, one minute minimum, maybe two minutes minimum, to make up for that pressure difference, we can do that on this screen. We can also do anything with the soft fill set up on the screen. So if you install this unit in your building and you want to fill the pipes and you want to take that to a 120 or 130 seconds to slowly fill up your system without blowing off any of the pipes, we can do that. Okay, we set a percent. We want to set it up at 30%, 30%, 120 second fill or 300 second fill. We can change that from this screen. Okay, our next screen is going to be the no flow shutdown screen. No flow shutdown is when there's no more call for water in the system, our pumps will start shutting themselves back. One pump will shut off, the second pump will shut off, the third pump will slowly work its way back. Okay, and once again, we're referring to an ASHRAE 90.1 2010 recommendation, 
that this is what we do. So what happens in, this, in the no flow shutdown mode, the pumps will slowly shut down till one pump is finally running. It'll boost itself up five pounds. If it sees no request for water or pressure, the pump will shut down, thereby saving energy and saving a lot of electricity, okay? Our next screen is going to be our speed setup screen. So when we can set our pumps up to run at the speed that they need to run, okay? We also set up our RPM for the motors and that'll work excellent. Our next screen is going to be our PID or proportional integral and derivative, which makes the pumps run more efficiently. If we need to speed the pumps up quicker or need to slow them down quicker, a bigger change, this is gonna make you save a little bit more energy in your installation. Our next screen is going to be the pressure setback screen. Once again, this is the ASHRAE 90.1 2010 standard, okay? And what happens here is we set this back 85% on the manifold and this by saving you energy in your building. Our next screen is going to be the protective setback, okay? There's an end of curve head on the unit that we have disabled when we ship the unit out, but you can save that and run the pump that way. There's an aquastat shutdown. If you need to install an aquastat for temperature reasons, we also can enable or disable that. The airlock pump shutdown is the third. If for some reason this pump has any air in it and runs at full speed, it will shut down an alarm to that situation. Our next screen is the BAS setup. So if you need to add a BAS card, Lawnworks, BACnet, BACnet IP, or Modbus, this is how we set it up into the system. Our next is going to be the field bus setup. The field bus is how the unit talks to the drives and the drives talk back to it. That is factory set and you, you do not need to change that. Our next screen is the clock setup. So we'll set up the PLC in the screen to read a clock. And once that's logged in, there's nothing for you to do on that screen. And that's by going back to the end and that's our whole booster setup. As you can see from the screens presented and the parameters associated with them, the unit is plug and play at the job site.